Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Oh, we've got a great one for you today. We've got a little countdown timer at the bottom of the page there. It's got a little parallax image or fixed background image in the back of it. When we roll it up to the top of the page, it's going to stick to the top of the page. Once it sticks there, the button's going to shoot over to the right hand side. It's going to shrink down and stay there while we're scrolling down the page. That's going to sort of maximize its effect because it's going to be in view at all times. Then when we scroll back up the page, it's going to jump back down to where it was. Like I say, that's a great little attention grabbing countdown for you. That's going to get people's eyes on it when it does this. And because it sticks to the top of the page, of course, that's going to give it more attention. Really easy to do. No coding involved in this today. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the visual builder. Okay, well, let's go down and I'll get rid of this and we'll start from scratch. Okay, I'm going to put it between these two. Obviously, put it wherever you want to put yours. I'm going to add a new section, little blue button there. I want to make it a regular section. Inside, I'm going to put a single row with a single column. Now we're going to add the old countdown timer. There it is right there. Obviously put in what you want your countdown to say up here. And I think I used that. Out of this world sale. Set the date here. You can obviously put it wherever you want. You can adjust it down to the minute here. Hours there, minutes there. I'm going to leave mine just like that. That'll work fine for me today. If you want to link the whole module, you can do it right here. Wouldn't be a bad idea if you're taking them to a sale to have this link to your sale page. Just put whatever link it is in there. Best practice always, if you're linking to your own site, leave it in the same window. If you're linking off site, put it in a new tab. That way your site will stay open. Okay, I'm gonna take that background away in a little while, but for the time being, I'll just leave it right there. Because once I take it away, you're not gonna see that white writing on the white background anymore. Okay, I'm gonna save that. I'm going to add a new module. Just underneath, I'm going to put a button. Fantastic. And I'm just going to go over to design, pop that button in the middle. Well, we've got our little elements that we want to use there. Now we're actually going to make this row full width. So it stretches the full width of the screen. To do that, I'm going to go into the row, the green tab over to design, sizing, here's the width right here, I'm going to slide that up to 100%, I'm going to copy that, control C and paste it down below in the max width, control V, or you can just type in 100% if you want to. As you can see, we've now got a full width row. Great. Well, to make this a little bit more interesting, I'm going to put a little image in the back and use the parallax effects that they've got with the Divi here. But before I do that, I really want to take that background color away. So save this. Go back into our little countdown there. Content background is always under content. I'm going to go in there. There's that color. I'm going to simply hit the little trash can to get rid of it. Great. It's still there, but white on white, you can't see it. So let's go back in our row and we'll put in a little image so we can see everything again. And again, content background always under content we've got color gradient image video background pattern or background mask I'm going to use a simple image for this today I'm going to grab the same image as I used before and there we go we've got our little countdown timer back in there now but to add a little bit more interest I'm going to use their parallax effect effect now true parallax is going to move the front and the image at slightly different rates, which is a lovely effect. But for mine today, for even more drama, I'm going to use fixed background or what they call CSS parallax here. So just click left click on the parallax there, and I'm going to change that to CSS. Now that background's staying exactly where it is. I like that. Obviously, choose what works for you. Great. Well, let's save this. That button's a little far away from our 
little countdown timer there so I'm going to go in the countdown timer I'm going to go over to design and spacing and I'm going to take away any padding that's on the bottom by simply putting a zero in there that's better that's taking that button back up to where we were but I also want that button to perhaps blend in a bit more with the styles that we're going on here so we can save what we've got going on we'll go back into the button itself here over to design down to button and this is where we've got our styling I'm going to keep this very simple I'm going to hit the use custom styles for the button button text style is absolutely fine text color is fine as white I don't want to have any background at all so I'm going to take that away by hitting the transparent over there I do want a little border around it so I'm going to scroll down a little bit button border width I'm going to give it two pixels the default is white that works perfectly for me but obviously you can change whatever color you want there and then just to offset it I'm going to roll down I'm actually going to take the icon away if we roll over it, it's got a little icon there I'm going to take that away by show button icon click on it turn it to no text shadow is fine but I'm going to give it a little bit of box shadow this one right here that's okay but it, I'm going to make it a little more dramatic by changing the color to white so it almost looks like it's glowing something like that great well that's working for me now now I want to add a little bit more padding to this row so everything's a little more centered so let's save what we've got going on here in the button obviously I didn't say but put your text for your button in under the content say something like shop now whatever makes sense to you and just below is where you can put your button link obviously to your sales page or whatever it is you're taking them same best practices apply well let's save this button now and just expand that row a little bit on the bottom so I'm going to go back into the row here green tab for the row and go over to designing and that's where you'll always find your spacing under design there and I think I used 70 before let's try that I'm just going to put in the 70 it'll put the px in for us or the pixels yeah I think that works fine for me fantastic so that's what we got and even on its own that's quite a nice little attention grabbing little section there but to make it even more attention grabbing let's stick it to the top when we scroll up there so to do that we can go back into our row the green tab again and this is common to all Divi modules rows and sections if we go over to the advanced you'll find scroll effects at the bottom we click on that we can choose to stick it somewhere and no I'm not being rude you can stick it to the top stick it to the bottom or stick it at the top and bottom I'm going to stick mine to the top if I scroll up now you'll see it sticks to the top of the page which is great I don't want any bottom sticky limit I want it to stick there all the time but it's taking up too much real estate there really I mean it's great but doesn't give the view as much to see down here so what we can do is make it a lot smaller when it sticks to the top so let's work on that I'm going to save my row settings and we'll go into the button we'll do that one first perhaps I would go into there again I'm going to go over to advanced and to scroll effects and we've got several scroll transform effects here we've got vertical motion horizontal motion fading in and out scaling up and down that's making it bigger and smaller rotating or blurring I'm going to use the horizontal motion first so I'm going to enable it by clicking on the little switch here I'm going to set that to zero because I don't want it offset at all and I'm also going to do this one to zero as you can see it's in the middle there okay well when it gets up to the top I want it to be sort of in line with this so I'm going to scroll it over to where I want it as you can see it's right there I think that'll do it then we need to use a bit of vertical motion to get it up here but I want to make sure it stays at zero all the way up to about 90% so I'm going to expand these arrows 
I'm going to take this one up to about 98. Obviously, do what works for you. And this one down there. So it should stay in the middle till almost when we're at the top there. So it stays there, then it's going to pop up to the top there. Might even pop that up to 99%. Great. Well, let's do similar now for our horizontal or vertical motion. So I'm going to enable it. It's disappeared off the page. Let's reset these to zero so we know where we are. There's our little button down there. Again, I want it zero all the way up to about 99%. So I'm going to stretch that down, make sure we've got zero everywhere. And at 99%, we want to pop it up a bit. So that's negative. We may want to adjust this again in a little while, get it right in line with our little countdown timer here. Okay, well, let's save that and we'll work on our little countdown timer. We can go in here to our little countdown. And what I want this to do is shrink down in size when we stick to the top there. So to do that, again, over to the advanced, scroll effects. This time we're going to use scale. I'm going to enable it. I want it to be regular size, again, right up till pretty late. I want it to be 100% everywhere at the bottom, so I'm going to put 100 in that first one. And my 100% wants to last about there. But I want to make it about 50% when it gets to the top, so I'm just going to put in a 50. It'll put in the percent, and that shrank it down quite nicely there. It's almost in line with the button. But of course our row is way too deep still. We've not really saved anything. So to counter that, let's save this. We'll go back into the row. This time I'm going to go to design. I'm going to go down to sizing. And now we've got this row, we set it to be sticky. If we go down to our sizing and height here, You'll notice there's a little pin icon. That means when it sticks to the top, we can choose how big it is. So I'm going to hit the little pin icon. Select when it's sticky right there, the little pin icon again. I'm going to drag it down to the size that I want. As you can see, it's coming up there. Yeah, let's leave it somewhere around there. Maybe a little bit less. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the whole thing up. I'm going to give it a bit of an offset so it shoots it up under our little nav bar at the top there. To do that, let's go back into the advance and down to our scroll effects. There's stick to top that we've got there. We've got an offset here. If I give it a negative value, you'll see it start to go up. Let's give it negative. Let's try a 100 and we'll work from there. That is actually not too bad. In fact, that works pretty much perfectly for me. What I'd like to do is just pop that button up slightly. So to do that, we'll save our little row settings here. We'll go back into the button itself. If you have trouble, just scroll it back down until it gets big again. It'll go back down to where it was. Get into the button. Now I'm going to zoom it back up to the top. And I just want to adjust it so it's in the middle of that bar. And again, over to the advanced, to our scroll effects. And that was our vertical motion. So I got 1.5, we'll try pump 1.6. You can hit the little arrows. And that's actually taking it up too far. So I'm going to type in a value. I'm going to change that 5 to a 6, perhaps, and see what happens. Yeah, that's going to work for me. So that should be it, really, if I scroll down. It's getting a little small too quickly here. So let's go back in here and just check our settings on the scroll for this one. The countdown timer itself, down to the scroll effects again under advanced. And the one we want is scale there. So it's staying at 100. Let's just change that to maybe 99. Yeah, that works perfectly. If I save this, you can see that a little bit better now. 
that way buttons moving to the right and it's shrinking down just where we want it so let's save our changes now and see what this is going to look like on the front end little purple button save the page changes and exit the visual builder and here's our page there's our little countdown timer there of course they can go on it they can click the button whatever they need to do down there when it gets up to the top it's going to stick once it sticks it's going to shrink down buttons going to pop over to the right so there you go guys there's how to create an eye-catching and effective little countdown timer sort of max out the use of your little countdown timer I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful don't forget if you've got any questions pop them down below the video I'll do my best to answer them or make a demo video for you once again this has been Jamie from system 22 and webdesignandtechtips.com thanks for watching have a great day